Hi, Carol here. A warm welcome to my craft room. And today I'm going to show you a card, a four-sided card, of course, with the LDRS Creative Release. And it is spectacular. Not only do you have this beautiful mountain with the snow on the top, on the caps of the mountain, you have the dye to go with it. You have the beautiful trees with snow. Yes, we had snow for the first time this morning. I love this little set with the owls and the fox. So crazy cute. You can decorate them up, put a scarf, a hat, boots on them. Beautiful, of course. There isn't an LDRS Creative stamp or die that isn't spectacular. I have to say that. And wait till you see the 6x6 pack of Christmas Delight paper with the fox, of course, the blue, and it even has the pink, which I love. And it has kind of, uh, you know, like a background that isn't so uh, colored as I'm going to use in my project. I just covered up the light for you there. And I hope everybody's having a fantabulous day today. I know I am and super excited to get this tutorial up for you. Now we're going to move on to the more traditional colors of Christmas, which is the green and red with some teal in there. Look at the presents. It's great. And of course, this edit was just under I think it was under 40 hours of work time and I did bring it down to a reasonable time where you don't have to take the day off work to view it. <laughs> I always say that, don't I? It's a delight to have you with me and I look forward to this tutorial that I can put up for you with all four sides of my card as usual decorated and this time I think you're really going to enjoy the Christmas scenes on this. I just had a blast and I cannot wait to share it with you. I'm going to dig into my stash. This is 12 by 12 glitter paper that I had in my stash. The card size is six and a half by six and a half. And of course I need to use the six by six paper. So we're going to have to do some wonderfulness in that it fits on there beautifully for you. And we're going to really have a blast on this card. All you do to make your own base, uh, excuse me, you're going to get your paws cut there if you don't out. Oh, my shattered nerves. What's he doing today? Throws me right off as usual. <laughs> so one of, it's 140 pound cardstock that I'm making my card base. And then I add another uh, half an inch to the top, score it. And we're going to have a little bit of score issues, but I'm going to show you if you don't score enough to get the fold wide enough for the bulk on the inside of your card, I'm going to show you something to do where your card doesn't suffer. Uh, having to change it up. So now I've picked, look at the colors in that. I love the candy cane. It's candy canes in a heart all over the paper with teal, red, and white. Beautiful. Can't I can't say enough about LDRS Creative. I can't. They're, you have to check over on their sales section. I say it all the time. Teflon dies and this new release is so crazy cute. I had a blast creating with it, and you're going to see that. Um, I have a blast creating anything. It's wonderful to be in a craft room creating, you know. And so here we go. I'm going to score it. I make two score marks here, but I'm going to need to have four. So I'm just going to move on just like I didn't make an error here, and we'll correct that error later because I didn't realize how much bulk I was going to have on the actual inside portion of the card. Now the outside and the back, I went to the traditional colors of the reds. And then on the inside, I went to the teals and the soft muted colors on that paper. Oh, you're gonna love it. I'm not kidding. You're going to love it. And uh, so here we go. I scored it. I put my double-sided tape. Of course, I'm going to distress the edges. When haven't I distressed the edges, right? <laughs> yeah, it makes for um, 
the ability to not be so precise. I tell you that all the time. It takes out the little bit of errors. So here we go. This is going to be the back of the card and I'm deciding, okay, what am I going to do here? Uh, let's do something different, I thought to myself. Let's cut it in half, which will be three inches on one side and three inches on the other. Six by six card. This has tiny little white hearts on it. And I'm going to put half on one side and half on the other. And this is where the glitter paper comes into play. I'm going to run that down the center. And this is a bulky glitter. I think this is the Stampin' Up! 12 by 12 bulk glitter. But it really doesn't uh, let off much glitter when you're shaking the card around, you know. And speaking of shaking the card around, I am going to do a triple shaker on this card. Oh yeah, shaking it up was wonderful. Yes. So here we go. Now I'm going to distress the edges of this, but I'm not going to add ink to the edges. I am going to leave it white because it was all white with me. I'm doing all four sides of the card and that's why it took a little bit of time to get up. I'm working on a wedding card as well. So um, this was just fun. F-U-N. The whole time I was creating. Even when I brought it to a place I didn't think I could recover it, uh, you'll see that I most certainly did, and it ended up to be a really nice card. I'm very proud of this card, and I'm very proud uh, to be a designer for LDRS Creative. It's an honor for me. So uh, let's continue on. I'm going to put double-sided tape on the back. I'm going to even it out so there's just a little hint on the edges of white cardstock. Make sure your hearts are going in the right direction. Always, yes, you don't want one upside down after you stick it down because that just means start over. And oh, that just doesn't, doesn't go over with me very well. <laughs> I do it, but I don't like the process. Thank you everybody for your comments. You know I love them and I've just had so much fun answering everybody and I hope that I was able to um, sufficiently answer any questions you had for me. And here we go, we're putting it down. Oh, here's where I have a little crease in there because <laughs> you're not getting that back up with double-sided tape. You're just not. And you're really not getting it up if, uh, you know, you make too much of an error where you're patting it down. You want to be sure that's where you want to put your paper. Then I went to my stash and I had this rickrack type ribbon. It's a real smooth ribbon. It's not, uh, it really does look like it has some substance to it, like it's a gritty ribbon, but it's not. It's a beautiful rickrack. And I thought that went with the theme. You'll see how it does later on. I put some on one side and some down the other side, I'm pretty sure. And uh, I'm watching this with you as I do the voiceover and I picture you right here with me in the craft room and uh, me just explaining the process along the way. So uh, yes, that's exactly what I do there. I run it on either side. There's something about this that kind of made it look like doors, you know, when you're opening up and closing a door right here. But uh, it's nice to use some of your stash, even if you're creating for a design, you know, you're designing for a company. Sometimes you do need to uh, go into your stash and add a few things. Now, I did change up my glue gun. This was not a detailed glue gun, and you're going to see later on in the tutorial. <laughs> that I had to use the big sticks on this, which I don't like to use. It lets out too much glue. But I did end up finding my little wee thin glue sticks, and I'll show you what they were. Uh, it's kind of funny, but it's affordable. And I always like to share anything affordable with you. So I'm patting this down. I did use hot glue. I don't do that often with my cards, but I felt that I didn't want any of this uh, ribbon to come up and it does have a look of material uh, which gives it a beautiful I don't know vintage style to it I guess that's what you would say the design of this card really is different and the reason why I went with the different look of it 
was to inspire you on four sides of the card to be able to, you know, instead of just looking at one card and getting inspiration, this way you can have four different sides and you can make a card with whatever side you like best. And they all run together, which made it nice. So the papers that I chose to work with, I'm just making a nick here to cut it off. I'm going to do the one-third to two-third uh, card stock on here. So each element now will go with that. I won't center it. I'll off-center it. So I'll cut this down. I'll put, uh, you know, one-third on one side. Then I found this book from, I think it was 1917. I barely could touch it. It was just, you can see, falling off, but it had the cutest little song on it. But I couldn't fit it in. The colors weren't right. I didn't, I didn't have the ability to gesso it because it was so frail. So I'm going to set that aside for another Christmas card, actually. Now, so here's the two-thirds of stripe, and then on the other side we'll do the one-third. And I'm going to butt them up together. I'm not going to raise anything up this way. I'll distress the edges, butt them up together, and then we'll start creating on it. And another thing that's really exciting is we're going to use the hybrid inks as watercolor. Hybrid inks have so many possibilities using them, and one of them is painting with them. Now, the little cubes by LDRS are the juiciest cubes you're ever going to get. You don't even need to add water to watercolor with them. Can you imagine you were watercoloring with hybrid inks and the look you couldn't, you, if you put it side by side with watercolor, you wouldn't know which one was done with the hybrid ink. That's how beautiful the ink is to color with. So I thought I would share that with you today. We're going to watercolor with hybrid inks on the cutest image ever. I'm putting a strip to match the back on the third section here and it's nice to work in the rule of thirds for just about anything you know and it truly does come to play when you are designing a page you know get that out of there Carol you don't want that on there no I was gonna line it up with the back but it was just off now I went to the LDRS creative dies in another set and this fall set everybody has to own that this die. It works with everything. Every style of card this die will work with. So I grabbed out the little girl and I grabbed the sentiment and I'm going to show you a few things that I do with this that I think you're going to like. Now I am going to do the outside of these with the little cube of raven black and then we're going to fill it in uh, remember I told you in the last video I used up one of the little cubes already so I had to go into the second cube which was juicy. I use this all the time because I'm a hybrid ink fanatic. I love it. And wherever you don't put enough pressure take your zero, 0 0.3 pen as long as it's Copic friendly or watercolor friendly and go over the parts that you missed. This is easy peasy. And uh, there you go. Now, there's a few exciting things I'm going to use in this tutorial. We are going to color with the Cutalola pen. Yes, and that's the Dautilism pen where you get all the dots, but it does it automatically. I got this precision pen at my uh, stationery store. And we're going to go over it because I want to change the font up just a tad. There, see the C? I went up on it. And there was nothing wrong with the font that was on it. I'm just adding a few little things. I'm making it darker because I didn't use a stamp positioner. I could not go over it again. So this is another way of being able to darken it up without a stamp positioner. And let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. It's not snowing now. The sun is up and it was wonderful to see snow on the rooftop today. I love the snow. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Oh, it cleared up. Oh, it's back again. <laughs> so once I added a little bit to the bottom, you know, of the shirt of her sweater, I'm putting eyelashes on her eyes on the top and lip 
little teensy ones on the bottom, which widens those big eyes up even more. And then we're going to start our coloring. I hope you enjoy it. I put the little ink cubes off to the left side of me and we're going to proceed. I like to use the number two filbert because you have a, a, a flat edge to it. Spit it out, Carol. And then I like to use a detailed watercolor brush. You can use a watercolor brush with the water in it, whatever you're comfortable with to color. We're going to mix some of them up. This is the number two filbert, and it gives me a little bit of, uh, you know, when I press down on it, I can cover, gives me coverage, there you go. And then I'll add a little darker around, oh, I have a pink over to the left there, you can hardly see it. And I'm going to do the eyes, the tip of the nose, and then we're going to darken up underneath the toque, and we're going to do the, don't forget the neck, and make a little bit of a curve for the nose. And when this dries up, it will lighten up as well. You won't get this, you know, this dark line on the nose. It'll lighten up nicely. If it doesn't, just add plain water to it and dilute it, and it will come out beautiful. You know, get under the, put those bags under the eyes. <laughs> just kidding. No, you need to darken up the eyes. You'll see how they pop right out when we add the purple. I'm going to make her eyes a purple color because that's the hues I'm going with. The greens, the yellows, the purples, and we're going to do the mittens. And doesn't it look beautiful? I mean, especially with the number two filbert. This brush is one of my favorites for doing detail work. And I'm just showing you, zoom it in, Carol. And uh, yeah, I, I tried to get the colors that I was using here. You just need a light and dark green, a brown and a yellow so you can mix them together, a pink. The LDRS cubes are the ultimate colors of hybrid ink. You can use the large ones, but it is nice to have these uh, new ones that came out. And juicy, you can see all the juice in them, can't you? I still have my water alongside there. I'm still working in a cramped space. <laughs> So all my supplies are starting to move in on me like they always do. And uh, yeah, there's no um, rhyme or reason to it. Underneath anything, you know, you need a little bit darker because it's shading. But whatever works for you. Lighten it up with your light colors and go in and make them dark with the dark colors. And it's so cute on the tooth because, you know, just wherever you feel like you want to put a crease, in it make it darker wherever you think it should be lighter you know in the curves of the toque or uh, hat whatever here in Ontario we call them a toque oh yes and I wanted to separate the fold up part by putting a bit of dark shading on the top but there honestly just color it in just have fun color it in, put some lights, put some darks, don't get paranoid. I ended up, I think I ended up making the hair uh, black, but I'm not sure, maybe not. I like the yellow there so much, I think what I did was, is I came in on the sweater and did the sweater yellow, and then I moved up and darkened the hair, if I can remember. I did the marshmallows in the hot chocolate, because this is a hot chocolate theme, Little Girl Hair by LDRS Creative. And I love the way the sweater turns down and the knit is the same as in the toque. It's kind of cute. And then we're going to uh, purple and green really do go nicely together. And doesn't that look like a watercolor painting? I mean, it's beautiful. And I do add some water to it, even though uh, I will go straight from ink to paper. But you will see if I want to lighten it up, I will add some water to that. I'll mix them up. It's only two colors. You don't, the image isn't big enough to worry about having, you know, uh, light, medium, and dark. And uh, yeah, I had that dark on there and decided to go light with the sweater. So I just made it as a shadow. Uh, I never worry about painting, you know. Here we go. This is where I'm darkening up with the uh, raven on the hair. And uh, then we're going to move along. It's a fun, fun image. 
to make. I'm sorry, I just got an email again. I'm going to keep going because that's what I do. And see how if you put the black hair on there, how it brightens up the toque and it brightens up the eyes, which I find fantastic. And then we're going to use our white pen. Of course, we're going to make some polka dots on that sweater. And if you have any error with your coloring, just grab a Signal Broad Uniball pen and make dots or stripes out of it to cover it up. Um, here I'm just adding shade where I think it should go. You add your shade where you think it should go. And generally it's in the creases or underneath something is a shaded area. You know, I should put it underneath the mittens there and uh, whatever you want to do, whatever looks pleasing to your eye will probably look pleasing to the person getting the card, right? I mean, what's not nice to receive something like this? Any card's nice to receive. And then I am going to move on to, if you have Wink Estella or you have something that is bright and colorful, you can put that on the snowflakes like I did. I took the LDRS round die here. We're going to cut it out. And I love this die. I'll have all of them on my blog for you. All the links to these sets. This one in particular I like because we're going to run ribbon through this. It has the holes and the scallop that lends itself to beautiful ribbon. And I'm just patting down the top of it there. It just... Um, I got a little bit too much on there. I'm. This isn't the Wink Estella, by the way. It's the Spectrum Noir Crystal Clear. Uh, it's similar to any type of glitter pen. You know, you can use just about anything, but it. Re you can see it there. Doesn't that sparkle? Really nice. It has a nice detailed uh, tip on that too, doesn't it? And so I'll go around and put whatever I want to sparkle on there. Uh, so many possibilities with this stamp set. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. And on the mug, it has a little snowflake. And I put some on the mittens. And now we're going to dot it up and you'll see me. I'm sorry I'm out of frame, but it's just the Signal Broad white pen. I added dots to it just because it had stripes. Why not have dots, right? I thought it looked nice. And it gives it this painterly feel which is beautiful and isn't she gorgeous and see what I mean the hybrid inks are amazing to color with I'm sure you'll find it uh, so relaxing to take an image and just set your ink down grab a watercolor brush and go crazy I put some signal uh, stripes in the hair there I don't know whether I should have left that off or not but oh well and now this is the uh, Ink Tense, uh, no, the Irresistible in the per Pico Embellisher. Irresistible Pico Embellisher, Carol. That's what it is. And I'm putting, it has dimension and it dries quickly and it's purple. So, um, yeah, you want to make sure when you're using anything liquid that you take it off of what you're doing first because it may have a bubble and then you're going to run into some issues on the white card stock. <laughs> yeah, I better wait that up, right? Yeah, I did before I get my white card stock. And there you have it. Isn't she gorgeous? I love her. A little few dots in the eyes of the white signal pen. Dots here, stripes there. And you have yourself a watercolor look image. And we're going to put that on the front of our card. Now, I'm going to just... You know, a little bit of detail got away from me when I added the white signal pen. So I'm just going to make sure I have my uh, precision tip black marker pen. Um, yeah, and as long as it's Copic friendly, it'll be friendly to everything else. Yes, it makes friends with all of those things on your page. And this is my 140 pound white cardstock, of course. And yeah, make some lines, make some circles, whatever kind of mood you're in, just do it. Just have some fun. Stay away from the face though, Carol. Yeah. And there you have it. And anything else you do is a bonus. And the green ribbon adds to this unbelievable. Wait till you see. I went to my stash and I had this cotton uh, ribbon. Just the perfect green. 
can't even tell you. I had to, there it is right there. Look at that. The polka dots with the dots on the sweater. Lovely. Just lovely. I love going to my stash and especially the ribbon stash. If you were like me back in the day, you know, uh, little kids that, little kids that, my grandkids, let's go with that, walk by with ribbon in their hair. I'd be saying, oh, can I take a snip of that ribbon to use on my card? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes we get desperate as crafters, you know. The color matches, you got to get it. So here we go. I went to another LDRS creative die to get this heart. And uh, like I said, I'll have all of this on my blog. Is this not the most beautiful cutout heart ever? Ever, ever. I did it in silver, but we're not going to use it here. This is where I got the idea to use these hearts on the inside page. But once you have a die that you absolutely love, oh yeah, there's, I tied it in a bow, but I didn't use the bow here. I used a heart from the stamp, from the die set onto the tie of the ribbon. You'll see that later. You know, it's like creating, right? We just got to go with it. I am punching out some leaves here. So I have just a few little bits of leaves for the front. I needed to add some white and that's where I ended up getting it from was a stamp. You just need a few little bits. I have an actual LDRS Creative um, leaf set as well I could have used. This was just quick and off to the side so I snuck it in there. Now the next thing I like to do is cut out some foliage so whatever you have in stamp or die cut just take out some foliage, some leaves and then I love the LDRS tag set. It is beautiful so beautiful it just has hearts coming out of it <laughs> so I took um, and die cut white I die cut red I die cut the the beautiful foliage six by six sheet of paper that had the berries and the leaves on it there's the red and if you can believe this doing this edit this is the fourth time I've had to do this section it keeps uh, erasing the, the the voice out like that I'm doing and I, I don't know I've called Apple and I'm having a few little bits of issues so I'm hoping I get to the end of this card it's terrible to do the voiceover and then go back and it's not there it, I've never had this happen before but I'm going to carry on and hopefully I can get past this. I think the key is that I can't stop for a break. I have to keep going. Every time I stop, it just disconnects itself. So if I don't run out of voice, I'm just going to keep going here. So now I love the leaves with the berries because I was able to take again. <laughs> I had to do this twice, by the way, because of that dot on top. You don't want to make it too thick. You don't want it to ooze out. You just barely want to press that and then press it off to the side because if you get a bubble, just like those ones up there, you're going to die cut another one of these and do it again, which is fine for me. I don't mind. Just if the circle is there, don't cover the circle because it will because it will spread. So give it a little bit of room to do the spread thing. And it looks cute whether it spreads or it doesn't spread, doesn't it? Now, glossy accents on the eyes and the lips on the whites of the eyes to make them shine. I leave the eyeballs dull because I have, you know, just looks nice that way to me. And then I'm going to put white down, put the lids on, of course, yes. And uh, set some, yeah, I'm gonna raise this, this one up. I think I've said this four times now. <laughs> I'm gonna use the Doris uh, strips and I have my own uh, video memorized now. That's, that's what happens. You never know what goes on behind the scenes of somebody that puts up videos. So be appreciative, you know, when you watch them because there is a lot of work involved, a lot of patience, a lot of redoing. So uh, yeah, always send some encouragement out to those that put tutorials up for you. It uh, 
you know, we enjoy it, but it does take time and it does take patience. So, <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, I love it. It's okay. So here we go. Today I have, oh, my nails and my shirt match. Well, not really. I think my nail polish is really, really red. But here we go. Let's take off the backing, put this down, and then we're going to put the white right like that. That's flat down. I did that flat. The only one that's raised up is the red. Then, uh, see that die set up on the upper right there? That's where I got the sentiment oval with the two holes on the side. And I put, uh, one thing in my stash I have are glitter threads. It's just thread with glitter running through it. <laughs> glitter thread, that's the name, right? And then I run this through. I just make, you know, about four or five little loops on it. And you know what? Even if you cover it up, it, see the little glitter? Ooh, yeah. Uh, if you cover it up a little bit, it's okay because you still get that glitter. You know, it runs with the theme of the card. And let me just tell you something here. This is just the front. <laughs> we have the whole inside to do yet. And I have to keep going because if I stop, something happens. And I lose what I just said, so I'm going to keep on going here. Now, I tape it down, and I grab my 140-pound cardstock, and I put it on the inside as well. So I have double weight on my cards. I distress the edges. I cover all this up. So any mess you want to make before you cover it up, do it now. And, uh, yeah, it's a nice, thick, bulky card, and that's what I like. That's what I like about doing larger cards is the bulk of it. I raise this up with the Dury strips. I'm going to put it down once I get it straightened up. And isn't it cute? I just think it's cute. The This release just sends your inspiration out of bounds. There's no boundaries on this release. It's so crazy cute. So that's what I'm going to say about that. I'm going to raise that up with round glue dots. And yeah. Isn't it coming together? Then when you put those leaves down, I'm just cutting it off there. I'm sure I could have taken this 40-hour tutorial and put it down to half an hour, but I would have left out all this fun and time I get to spend with you. And you don't have to watch all my vid videos in one session. You can watch them throughout the week. <laughs> That's why I do a video every week, I guess. So it gives you time to watch my tutorials. <laughs> By the time you get through one of them, there's another one up, right? Yeah, so let's carry on here. Put that down. I love the silver, it goes really well on the front. I'm just taking a little bit of something off there with my pokey tool. Then we're going to proceed and finish this section up. Let's see if I can stop it and end up coming back. Look at that. Nothing happened this time, so I can proceed. <laughs> Are you still with me? I hope so. So here we go. We're going to put some of the leaves on the bottom. And this is just uh, the hearts there. It goes with the theme on the inside. And uh, you can't get enough shabby chicness or vintage chicness on a card, can you? Layers and layers and layers. It's wonderful. Uh, I don't have an issue with it either either. I don't have an issue with them, but I enjoy clean and simple cards as well. I think it's an art to be able to do that, to take a, you know, a card base and design just on the white cardstock alone. I think it's beautiful. So to each his own, and today we're doing this stacked up thick card, oh so thick. And I am going to make a box to go with this because of the thickness and the weight and I will put that in another tutorial. I do have another card I have to get ready and uh, the wedding card and then we'll uh, move forward. After that, I'll put a tutorial up with the box for this if you want to see it. Uh, I've made another box card before so I will try to link that up if I remember. So now the mittens. I want the mittens to hang off of the actual image that the oval image so yeah watch it juicy i mean is that the juiciest hybrid ink you've ever seen in a little cube in your life it's wonderful and that's why i love to color with hybrid inks especially the cubes 
Oh, yeah, beautiful. So I just pressed it down, and what's lovely about this, the more water you use, and I'm using a detail brush here, by the way, because you can see I don't have a lot of space, and a detail brush is wonderful. You can get in all the little nooks and crannies and actually enjoy it. I'm reaching over for water. When you see me going to the upper side of the screen, I am grabbing some water and this detail brush is wonderful. It's one of the ones I got at Michael's. And then just make your darks and lights. You know, if you're doing a painting, yes, you need to keep your images in proportion to where the sunlight's coming in for your shadows and that. But for straight coloring like this, on stamped images, just have a blast. Don't worry about whether it's coming in from the left or the right or, you know. If I can't figure out something and I think, you know what, I'm not going to really be able to think this out on because there's so many images, I go with it direct sunlight from the middle. Can't make a mistake because you lighten up everything that's in the middle of your objects. So it works out well. I take my detail pen, I go over everything to make sure it's nice and black because I didn't stamp it with any type of uh, stamp positioner. So there you go. Yeah, clean that up. Then I'm going to fussy cut these out. Oh yeah. And I'm going to leave the centers in there on the mittens. It does look cute. I need to add green to the bottom of the mittens. I'm doing a reversal here, right? because the other mittens were purple. Here I'm going to have green and purple. So it would have been nice if you could see me do it though, wouldn't it? <laughs> there you go. I did a light, the lime green with the dark grass green and it's a perfect combo. And look how it grabs that ink, I'm telling you. This is beautiful. If you don't like to color with watercolors because it's kind of too free form for you, grab your hybrid inks and you will really enjoy your time spent with them, especially these little LDRS Creative Mini Cubes. They're delicious. Look at that. Just a detailed watercolor brush and sit down, put some nice music on, relax, and have a, a just have a blast. That's what creating is, isn't it? Yeah. I always look forward to the creation portion of it and then the edit well it takes some thinking so it uses up more of my brain cells to do that <laughs> and then the voiceover well it's just yakety yak and i'm pretty good at that right so here we go look at the pico embellishers already dry i'm trying to figure out okay what am i going to use there and look at every doesn't it look like watercolor? I'm always amazed because we do fear the unknown, especially with coloring with inks. But sometimes, you know, you have to step outside the box, so to speak. And yeah, just love what you do. That's what I do. Let's grab some love hearts and move forward. So I have the mittens tucked in with glue dots and I raise them up with dimensionals. And if you could see it, I apologize here. Some, yeah, there you go. I put a heart that was from the new collection. It was in the dies. I put that in the center and I'm loving it. I put two hearts on the outside where the thread looped through the sentiment uh, oval. And yeah, I'm happy. I really am. I just think it's awesome. I just love the stamps. Look at that, you've got the mittens, the hot chocolate, the mug, the snowflake, so many elements. You're able to use ribbon, uh, you get to keep things nice and white and bright, glitter, it's got it all. Glitter in your thread, has everything. I'm really happy with this and I adore the paper collection. So here it is, the, I'm just putting things back. See, this is the leaf set. It has the leaves, the chestnuts, and the three ovals. I love it. And I don't know what happened there. Sometimes if it's a long tutorial, I forget to zoom in, zoom out. So you have to be patient here. I'll be back. And look at this. Look at the berries that match the berries in the leaves. But only you have them with teal and red. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. I didn't use it. But it is beautiful. Yeah, I'm just showing you. I put another layer of white on the inside. 
and I'm going to go with the more muted color. Yes, I'm going to mute it out because I'm going to have a lot of elements on here, three shakers actually. So uh, yeah, if you need another coffee or a Coca-Cola, we're at the, oh, I think two thirds of the way, maybe halfway through. And uh, this is what I'm going to do with those mountains. I'm going to take my Fiskar stamp press, I love this thing, and I am going to push it down. And But I am going to, once I do this, I'm going to put gold, it's hybrid, remember, I have time to put gold um, um, embossing powder on it. Oof, I left me there. Yes, because it's hybrid, it stays wet for a little bit. So then watch, you won't even know that I stamped it in the Raven Black. I'm going to do another one because I thought maybe I'd use two of them, but I didn't. But it's nice to have them. I wanted to show you the difference too. One I did with the, uh, the Clear Mark, the LDRS Creative Clear Mark, and then it's like Versa Mark. And then the other one is with Black Ink, and they both look identical. Yes, hybrid ink. It's the middle baby, you know. It the dry the dry ink is the dye ink. If you can remember that, the dry ink is the dye ink. The hybrid gives you the middle ground, and then there's pigment, which is really wet. So hybrid is right in the middle. Mm -hmm. Now this was on top of the dye. This piece of acetate showed you the picture of the mountains. So I cut it out and used it as a stencil. I used it as a mask. Excuse me. Why not? It's in the set. What else are you going to use it for, right? This was the acetate that went over top of... I'm trying to get into frame. <laughs> so you can see me cut it out. Isn't that hysterical? But I thought, wow, instant mask. It's awesome. So I just cut around it. I put some masking tape on the bottom, put it down, and this way I get to mask out those cutesy bootsy little owls. Yeah, owls and fox. Who the thunk, right? I think it's gorgeous. So once I get this done, you're going to see I'm going to grab some purple tape, whatever tape you have around that's going to uh, keep it down so that you can mask off is great. And then wait till you see what I do with this. It's amazing. And I actually, oh, it is one of the prettiest cards to date, I think. For me, I just had so much fun creating it because I like to, I don't like to say make mistakes and correct them, but I like to push the boundaries when I create. If I go somewhere and I don't like it, I like to think of ways to where I can redo it without starting over and see what happens at the end. And uh, it's always been that way throughout my video tutorials. That's why they're rather long because I want to show you as much content on one tutorial. You can zip right through it and go to the end. That's the beauty of YouTube, right? But if you want to see how I retrieve some things and add different elements and different techniques, I encourage you to stay with me. And uh, I get a lot of people staying with me because my comments are fabulous. I love them. I get to know who's watching my tutorials. So I masked it off with my little owl. I am going to, um, yeah, here we go. I don't know what I was doing here. I think I already masked it. I think I already said it. Oh, I didn't. Oh, I'm going to go over it again. That's the beauty of this. I can see exactly where I was with this Fiskar thing. Yeah, just like a stamp positioner. Sometimes you can get right on. And look at that. Now it looks like, you know, I don't know, it, it looks pretty good. I just wanted to show you a way to mask. If you get one of those acetate pieces with the picture of the actual image, use it as a mask. It's, it's beauteous. Yeah, there you go. We'll put that back in. Any gold will do. You know I love my gold. And look at that mama owl with the baby owl. And here's where I thought of using my, uh, my Cuddalola pen. And it's a dot pen. It automatically makes the dots for dot for uh, penalism. And uh, it's very nice. I think you're really going to like it. I'll show it to you in just a minute. But it had uh, gold inks with it. So that was great. 
And this way, I'll shadow out my images with the Dottolina pen, and um, it makes the, you know, the dots. Yes, I'll say it again. And it's pointillism. Did I say dotalism? <laughs> oh, it's just an ism. What can I tell you? I think they call it pointillism. Don't come here if you want to know all the professional words of everything. Just come here to have some fun. It's pointillism. Yes. And I need to have the frame because I'm going to do a shaker. And the funniest thing happened with this. You're not going to believe it. Well, you are if you watch my tutorials, what I did here. It's hysterical. I think I did it in another video as well. <laughs> yeah. And there's no way I was starting over, so I just came up with a plan. I have an A, B, C, D plan. Yes, either one of them will work. <laughs> Isn't that the most beautiful dye? Oh, and it's Teflon coated, people. Oh, beautiful. And the price is... When you go in and check out LDRS Creative Clearance, your your mouth is going to drop at how much discount you get on these. It's amazing. Now, I'm trying to figure out what to take out and what to leave in, but I had to leave this in. What I did for the acetate of this shaker, instead of making a plain wide oval and put it over top, I don't know what I was thinking because I thought, okay, why don't I just die cut the same uh, lace edged oval in the acetate and put it over top? Well, guess what? You can't do that because it has holes in it. Thus, when I put my little beads in there, <laughs> yeah, they're going to be everywhere. And I didn't realize it, honestly, till the beads got in there. And then I had to start over because I'm thinking, what? Now what? It's all put together. The beads are in there, and I've got these holes that match that. So I had to take a break, okay? So I'm going to come back. <laughs> so here we go. I am going to put the sentiment on. The, we'll start with the making of the inside of this before I go too far. So I'll back it up. It's going to be in gold of coise. And this is where the mountains and the owl is going to go. But I needed to have clouds on here. Now, this is an 80 pound paper. Uh, and it has, this is the sentiments <clears throat> Owl our love. Isn't that cute? Nice pun there. Owl our love. And this is a very flimsy cardstock than what I'm used to, but it has this back. Um, it's fibrous kind of in the background. It's amazing. It makes for the most beautiful image. So I took my um, cloud stencil and I took some gold ink, my Delicata ink, and the key to making good clouds is to use a pouncer instead of the applicator. A pouncer gives you the pressure you need when you need it. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? So you just pounce it up in an upward stroke towards the sky first. That gives you the light. And then the more pressure you put on your pouncer, obviously, the more ink you're going to get on the image. And I adored this background, let me tell you. I mean, clouds behind owls, okay. Like, isn't that fabulous? Look at that. It's just like looking out my window. And, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, excuse me. I still have that raspy throat thing going on. And then just move your stencil. You make your stencil just out of some paper. Just cut some uh, round, you know, we've all done it. Been there, done that. And then take a pouncer, if you have one. Um, and that saves on your, uh, on your um, uh, applicators. And another thing I do with my applicators, my pouncers, let's get it, applicator pouncer. <laughs> on the pouncers, take a baby wipe and wrap them up and put an elastic on them and that pouncer will last you forever. Yes, you just need the moisture in there. And then you change your baby wipe when you see it's getting dry. You could just add some, you know, spray some mist water on the baby wipe and it'll keep your pouncer nice and moist. So here we go. We have the clouds, we have owl, our love, 
we have the beautiful fox images, but then we have that, it reminded me of the uh, wings of the owl, that muted image there. It's almost a gold, it's really pretty, it's like a gray gold. And then we're gonna move on to the Cutalola pen. This is it here, this is my new one. I have, I have three of them because I like to keep different inks in each one now. Excuse me, so this one is the newer one and it has the blue tin. And all you do is charge it for about an hour on your laptop or your, uh, I haven't tried it on my iPad, I use my laptop. And charge it and then you're all set. And you can work it with the charge going as well. That's the beauty of it. It comes with, with all, did I say it comes with? <laughs> It comes with all different colors, and I did have the gold and the silver, so why not use it, right? Even though with the pointillism, it's small images, but it gives you that oomph that I want on this image. And I'll show you why in just a minute. So underneath all the shaded areas on these this mountainous terrain, I am going to put the Dottolina pen. And I... I don't know. The artist in me loves all these tools, you know, and this company is amazing, okay? They're the nicest people. Uh, remember I did a painting? I did a, with Beatrice Potter, and I used the pointillism pen, and it stopped. Uh, I couldn't get it working, and then they sent me the new ones. They actually sent me two. And that's why I use them for different colors. They're fabulous. They stand behind whatever they have there. But let's move on. This is an LDRS creative tutorial for the design team. But I want to be able to show you how to utilize your stamps and dies. That's what I do. So I'm going to put some powder down. I'm going to put this gorgeous little fox with that tail. I'm going to use my silver embossing powder. And then we're going to do the dotalism on this as well. I'm not only going to dotalize <laughs> the fox, but I am also going to put grass with the dots on the bottom. And then we're going to have the little seed beads in both images because there's going to be three shakers. One on the top, or one on the bottom shaker, and then two on the top. So here we go. I'm stamping it again because I didn't know what color I was going to use. So uh, I chose to do two of them. And uh, I'm redoing it. So I had the two, but I ended up just using the one. And look at that. Isn't he the cutest little thing you ever saw? And the tail, like the <laughs> looking past his tail, it's so cute. And then we're going to heat set it. And then I'm going to come back and take the Dottolola pen and do some pointillism. Love it. Mm -hmm. You're going to love it too if you have one. This is the perfect way to get shading without having to color. It's, it's great on both counts, right? So there you have it. This is going to be for the top shaker. It's going to be a shaker. And instead of the gold clouds, we're going to... You're going to see the difference in the texture of papers also. May I say that? The fox is on 140 pound paper and the other is 80 pound textured paper with the owls. So I grab another pouncer with my silver Encore ink. You can use whatever color you want to use on your clouds. You can use the hybrid ink. You can use whatever you have to make them. But I like the Encore. Uh, oh, and then I'm going to have a little Snickers bar. I needed a snack. Oh, yeah. I just, and I don't snack on chocolate. I'm not a dessert eater, but uh, my grandson Hunter left that for me. So I said I would eat it, and that's what I'm going to do here. Yum, yum. So put your pouncer down in there, and with light pressure first, you always can add two, but can't take away very easily. You can take away, but it's probably you're taking away and using another sheet of paper. <laughs> So here we go, pounce away, add some clouds, press on it. When I'm going back and forth like that, I'm not pressing very hard, by the way. And then with your stencil that you made, or if you have a stencil, 
just make some pretty clouds like this with some inks. You can do the blue, you know, a dark blue would look nice as well, but my theme was gold and silver here. You can see I'm wrapping it up in the same baby wipe as the gold, but on the bottom. Yeah, I'm going to save on that. That's a miracle in itself. And look at there. Clouds. So pretty. These are beautiful stamps to have on hand. You can use them for fall cards like I'm using for Christmas cards. And here you go. My Dottolina pen is all charged. I need to get a gold refill out and take out the black. All you do, it has that little point on the end. Remember to take that off. The little um, uh, wax thing on the end that protects the ink and the, uh, the fine point on it. And then you press it twice, doot, doot, and doot, doot, and it'll stop. And one doot, it'll go slow. But I like it in fast motion. And here we go. Pointillism plus. Doot, 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 doot. Isn't that cute? Oh, yeah. I did the body. I love that. I love taking supplies out. And yes, you have to use some of your supplies, even if you're doing... Um, you know, I'm doing my design team project here, but I thought you would like to see different ways to utilize things you have in your craft room. Takes two seconds to do this, and then I am going to use the snow. You know that liquid applique I have? Uh, I'm at the end of it, actually, of the one tube, but I took a nice long needle, took it out of the tube, I cut the tube, and then you add your your heat from your heat tool and it makes those poofy mountains. It's beautiful. And the reason why I put that on is when I put my seed beads on, it's going to stick on that snow applique. There it is there. I didn't have enough strength to squeeze it out. So I grabbed one of my long pins and I'm going to show you how it looks once you add heat to this. It's beautiful. And when the seed beads get in amongst that, oh, the dimension on it is beauteous. Put it down there, Carol, so everybody can see. There you go. Nice snow caps. There, you know, you get to leave it white and gold, which is very nice. You know, you get that beautiful look. I'm still trying to squeeze it out. I just took my scissors and cut the lid off. I just cut it off, put my pin down in there and grabbed the liquid and then I put a little bit of saran on it with an elastic and keep it for a later date. There come the scissors. <laughs> yeah, when you get this far in your video, you're just chomping it off. Yeah, and here we go. We're just going to move along here and uh, we're getting there, folks. I'm having fun. I know you're probably bored senseless, but you can just zoom down to the end and uh, see the end result here. It's always nice to be able to have these little items like a darning needle to put that on. And then you add some heat to it and it's beautiful. There you have it. That's what, and then I'm going to use uh, liquid glue. I used my Nouveau glue. You don't want to have hot glue because all your seed beads would get down in there. You don't want any dimension on the actual cardstock, right? So I used my Nouveau glue. I used my spatula there to hold it down. Now googly eyes. Of course, these little owls have to have googly eyes. These are the mini googly eyes. They're at the other end of the container there. So I took my Nouveau, I put my googly eyes on there. Cute, cute, cute. Because I'm using seed beads, it looked so cute to have the googly eyes and the seed beads. Yeah, this is stash stuff that makes these stamps and these dies come alive, doesn't it? And the mountains and owl are love. Beautiful card. I mean, you can use this for a wedding card, actually, for Valentine's Day, for a birthday. Um... It's endless. And I just wanted to see the close-up of the Dautilism. So cute. See the texture in the cardstock? It's 80 pound. Uh, I got this paper so long ago, I can't even tell you where I got the paper from because I generally use the 140 pound cardstock, but not in this case. The Nouveau came out 
He looks cross-eyed there, doesn't he? Which makes him even look cuter. Yeah. And the gold, yep, there's the Nouveau glue. I used my needle again, put it on there, and cutesy wootsy. So, thank you so much if you're still with me. We're an hour in. Can you believe it? An hour and a half video. Yes. For those of you that joined me, thank you so very much. I'm so delighted, I can't tell you. And uh, I know they're long, but LDRS has so many dies and stamps that are out of this world. You can't help but cover all four sides of your card. I can't. And use the papers. And yes, I could do one card each, but I don't know. Call me crazy, but I like to utilize all my white cards all my whiteness on my cards. There we go. We're going to set that down with some liquid glue. I love the way the clouds are silver on top and the gold clouds on the bottom. It made me happy. This new release set, please take a look. You're going to love it. And all of the rest of the dies and stamps that I used today, really sweet. So here's where I ran into the problem. I put down the, I raised it up to put my seed beads in there. I took the top off and then I put the matching acetate die cut as the bottom, you know, the frilly lace. When I realized, oh my, there's, I'm um, struggling here. <laughs> yeah, had to put some glue on the bottom and go back. But, um, I ended up raising it twice, okay, so I have two levels high because I used uh, seed beads, gold seed beads, but I also used some of this sand, this gold sand that I had to give it that crunchy look uh, because um, of the texture. I just wanted to have some texture, but you can see the holes in it. The minute I put the seed beads in here, it was crazy, so I had to go to plan B. Now. Here's where I need it. I found a bag of this crazy long hot glue. Look at it. So I cut it into six inch lengths. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have any sticks. I ran out. And then I found this bag that I had bought this ginormous roll of thin hot glue. I knew I was going to use the hot glue on this. I'm making sure that none of this pours out of the gold. Yes. Now, what I did for this is I cut around the edges, but I put double-sided tape over the holes, okay? So you can't see it right there, but double-sided tape is over the holes. And then I took the, I released the tape on it, but I have to cover it. So I went into my lace stash and I found this gorgeous gold trim with sequins in the middle. It's just a trim. Oh my. Yes, surprise, surprise. And I didn't think it was going to look so hot. I really didn't. I thought too much texture. But wait till you see it. It's one of my favorite features of this LDRS Creative Design Team card. Uh, you have to go to the stash when things don't work out. And this had enough. Oh, I also had lace. But this had enough. Look at that. I got to jump back in. I had just enough. <laughs> Yeah, it folded itself over to cover the double-sided tape and the holes that were in there so you didn't see it. And it actually looked like I did this on purpose, but I didn't. It was covering up a mistake, as always. And it's like it was meant for this card. It reminded me of needlepoint, of a needlepoint card, you know, a uh, uh, sorry, hanging but I had to take some bulk off there, so I just cut it and then I put a seam in it and put it together. It just had a little bit too much bulk in there for some reason. Then I took the hot glue because you know I don't use thin acetate. I use acetate book covers as my acetate that I get at the stationery store. So I just went around it and slow, even though I sped it up, it was nice and slow to make sure that it had a beautiful crease in it. It folded over nicely and it covered the holes in the acetate 
and I'm telling you not one seed bead came out. It was perfect, but you could see on the sides. I didn't like being able to see all that uh, tape, you know, on the sides. So guess what? Back to the stash. And I found a roll of, of uh, sequins that matched the sequins on this uh, applique. What are the chances of that? I tell you, the Lord is so good. And I just put this, the app, the seed beads, between the seed beads and the applique and sequins, remembering these three names, I put that, look, you can see the roll off to the right. I just put hot glue from my detailed glue gun. You don't want a lot of glue out on this because you are putting it on top of acetate, even though it's an acetate cover. You know, it's a book cover, acetate book covers. They're called sheet covers, actually. I'll, I'll leave the link for sure. And then I put the glue, I went around it so that when I put the LDRS Creative die cut, the white, over on the side that matched the bottom layer, but it's in my 140 pound paper instead of 80 pound, I went, <coughs> excuse me, I just you know, took the beautiful, oh, I can't even tell you how much I loved this when I was finished, but I knew I needed to have more depth in the fold. I didn't put enough, uh, when I scored it, I didn't have enough gusset in there. So we're going to remedy that by cutting it entirely off. I'm going to cut it in two, and then I'm going to show you what you do if you end up putting too much bulk on the inside of your card. Easy peasy to create, uh, to fix up, excuse me. Now, you're going to need to cut this because you've added different bulk to it, right? You've added to it. So you're going to lose a little bit on the bottom by cutting it there. I cut it on the top and the bottom so I could push it out so you could see the beautiful sequins down in. And it looked like this set was made for this die cut to me. I just loved it. Then I took, I thought of putting flowers to really bulk it up with, uh, these are paper flowers, but I took it off. I knew all I needed was seam binding, white seam binding, run it down through the Delicata Gold ink. Yeah, I didn't use that. That was too harsh. It was too delicate of a scene in the background to use that thread, uh, the rope. So I got rid of that, and then I got the white, you can see it, my white seam binding ribbon. Then I took my Encore Gold ink, put it upside down on my island there on the glass mat, and ran it through, which made it had the it made it have gold lines on the seam binding. Wait till you see it. It's it's so delicate and it's made for this card. It really is. So here we go. I have to make sure I design the top so it's not over the top. And I decide to use that little fox as my image behind that oval. And I cut out a piece of acetate, <clears throat> excuse me, with the same die and I made it a shaker. And I only put one, yeah, you can use it either way like this. I ended up using it, I think, going across uh, vertically instead of horizontally. And <clears throat> I had, sorry, excuse me. Yeah, um, it's a lot on the voice today after just getting rid of pneumonia. Um, so here I'm looking at everything. Oh, there's a little heart stuck there. Yeah. I got rid of it and I'm looking at the inside trying to figure out what's next and uh, I thought I am going to use that little fox as the background for it but first I have to cut this off yeah that's scary eh? but it had to be done I needed a thick gusset I needed to add four layers and that's perfect you can always fix something up really you can so I'll cut this off. Then I take a piece of that uh, six and a half by six and a half gold foil paper I have uh, that my friend Tina mailed me. Thank you, Tina. And I'm going to make another gusset. So we're going to fold it over. You're going to put it on your scoreboard with four lines, okay? 
You're going to score it down each line. And I'll show you how we do that here once I get the scoreboard out and the gold paper. It's nice and thick. Let's cover that up now. You don't want to cover, th you don't want to cut through that, right? <laughs> Put a few things away, my sequins, and I think you're going to like the finished product. I really do. I hope you're inspired by it, and I hope you'll check LDRS Creative out for their dies and stamps, and especially this new release. It is as cute as a button. I love them, and I'll be using them again in the future here. I'll be doing some more cards with them. So there's the extra piece of cardstock I had. See, you get to use your extra cardstock. I will cut it off right there, just making a mark, cut it off. Then I just tested how many marks. So I knew it didn't matter how many score marks I put in, I can always cut it off. So I started with uh, four. Once I get the scoreboard here, you'll see, you're going to put one on the outside, which will be the front. And then you're going to put the other side on the inside of the cover. You don't want both of them on the outside, okay? So here we go. I'm just adding a little bit of my Costello on the leaves. I thought it'd be nice. So here we go. Take my um, score thing there and let's score some lines in there. So one, two, three, four, I think I had in there. I had to cut, I had five, but I cut one off. So I think it's four. Now watch, I have enough room to put this really quick on the outside. So there you have it. Then I turn it over. I see how many I'm going to need. I need, uh, I think it's four. We'll see once we get going here. Now on this one, I turned it over and I put it on the inside. So I cut it off right here. You can always take away, but you can't add once you're, once you're cutting, right? So here you go. You're going to do it like this. That's going to not go on the outside. It's going to cover my Rick Rack ribbon. You don't want it on the outside. Just bend it over and put the glue on the inside like that, right there. And it's going to be perfect. It really is. It looks beauteous. You have that gold that ties in with everything else. I just thought it was really sweet. I was really glad I did it this way, you know, that it worked out. And I didn't put enough gussets on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, everything has a purpose, right? So here you go. I have one, two, three. I'm putting some of the glue down. You can see what works out well for you, but you have to move fast on it. So here we go. The hot glue will hold that down. And you have this beautiful gusset on the top. That Ah, oh, just perfect. It's gold. It's on the inside of the back side, so you can see the Rick Rack. You can't get any better than that. And then I'm going to take a piece. I'm going to put the same lines in it to add to the top. You'll see that in a minute. So here comes the uh, ribbon. This is, yeah, so just start and slide it through. Look at that. You get these lines in there that uh, leave a little bit of white on the bottom. Don't do all of it with the gold. And then I did it four times, tied a knot in it. Uh, I made four, you know, on each side, four loops. And I'm going, that's what's going to cover up that spot right there on the bottom that we cut off. And it's just exactly what the doctor ordered there. It, yeah, I took it apart. I had to figure it out a different way. And first I want to clean up because I have to put my card there. So it's four loops. Just back and forth, back and forth. And it looks like um, that candy. You know that candy, that striped candy? Uh, it, it really was beautiful. Then I tied it with white, you know, the end of the white ribbon. Cut it off, and then I'm going to add some hot glue to hold it in place perfectly, of course. And put it on the bottom, and oh, I tell you, I thought it was breathtaking. Um, not because it was my card, but because it just turned out beautifully. And you know what did it? The LDRS Creative Stamps. That's what did it. Those owls with the mountain top and the sentiment, owl, our love. I think it's perfect. It says everything right there. Just add some of your ribbon. There you have it. Put some hot glue. Be very careful because it is hot glue. 
cut it off. I loved it. I really did. I love that dye from LDRS, the oval dye there. Really pretty. I have them all put away, but I am going to put them on my blog so you know which ones I used. Add a little bit of glue to set it out. Look at the stripes. And all you did was run it through that ink with your fingers. And it came out so pretty. Yeah. Look at it. Oh, I love looking at it. Yes. Really pretty. And you have the mountains in the background. You have the, be the seed beads. And you have the chunky glitter inside that. Uh, and then the mountain, you know grabbed hold of the, the applique, the snow applique, grabbed hold of some of the beads and some of that, um, I got it at Michael's. It's, let me just see, it's right behind me here. It is called decorative gravel. Who'd have thunk? Yeah, I had a little bit of glue there from putting that down, but I'm going to cover it. So that gave me the, that's what gave me the idea to cover it. So I just made a tick mark and then we're going to cover that glue spot up. I'm going to make four lines just like I did on the other side, but you're going to do it on the shiny side. Score on the shiny side right here. One, two, three, four, and it matches the binding. On, might have been three. We'll see once I get it cut off. And then you're going to put it one, two, three. So you end at one, two, three. Yeah, three. Sorry. Three of them. And then kind of fold it because fold it beforehand. You don't want to fold this afterwards, you know. Make the folds now and it won't be so hard once you glue it down, you know. It already has those fold marks in it. Put some double-sided tape on there and then the back matches the front. Beauteous. I tell you what, everything is coming together. Well, I haven't run into anything else here while I'm doing the edit, so that is a blessing. Here we go. We're going to put that on the top. And uh, it's really nice the ideas you get when things don't work out, you know, how they come to you. You don't think you're going to be able to do it, but then as you keep staring at your project, these things come to mind. And make sure you hot glue that. If you're going to do anything like this, it will secure it on because it's going to open and close, open and close. And the beautiful um, idea behind this is you can flip it. So you have the front, you know, you can use the front or the inside as your front page. Here I just had some glue dots I had to take out. It was too bulky. I could see them. And there you have it. There's another slit on the top there I need to cover. And I do that with the hearts to the die set. Every one of these die sets pull together for one another. And I love these dies, this particular heart die. You have the inside gut portion, and then you have a small, medium, and large die cut that the centers come out. So you're, you're left with the guts to put down as a whole heart, which is amazing, yeah. Then just lick your finger and you can pick it up. <laughs> Who needs a stick? Who needs a quickie stick to pick it up, right? Just lick your finger. <laughs> Save you some money. Well, yeah, I'll help you out there. Yeah. Is it call it quick? I don't know what it is. A quick pick stick or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah, the Lord gave you one already. It's called a finger. Just lick it and pick up your supplies. <laughs> Works beautifully. So here you go. I'm just stacking it. Stack it with the LDRS Creative Die Hearts. Oh, I'm a Die Heart fan, I'll tell you that. And uh, yeah, I was gonna add, I was just gonna take my finger and add a little bit of gold on the white, but I didn't like it. I think the ribbon and the gold tag is perfect. Look at that, oh, I keep staring at it. I love the gusset on this, it's so clean. There you have it. Now we just have to finish the top portion with another shaker. And you have yourself a card. Can you believe it? I got it down to an hour and 26 minutes. Oh, our love. Look at the sides of that. You're going to love it in the pictures because there isn't anything out of, uh, out of line with that. It came together perfectly. Oh, we just need to um, put the sentiment portion on the top right there to make a silver shaker over top of that cute little fox in the paper. 
pack. You're going to love this. these two paper packs. You have to check them out. I added some of the beads right there because I have to put this on. I only raised it up once and I die cut it twice. I die cut it because I needed to have the acetate on there and then I die cut it again in silver to put over top and it is beauteous. Yes. And I have to, I can't think if I use, so, oh, <laughs> listen to this. There was one red seed bead in the silver seed, one red out of all of those. And I had to get it out. It didn't matter what I did. Oh, look at that curved uh, uh, glue stick. Isn't that funny? And they're affordable if you buy them like that, by the way. Let me just say that. Then I went around the edges with my hot glue. And if you get to it while it's still hot, it has a nice edge. You're not going to have to worry about doing anything on there. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you have your pokey tool handy right away, I don't want any seed beads coming out. Just go along the edge, take your pokey tool quickly, and then take off the hot glue, and it does look nice. You're not going to have a rickety edge on that. And there you have a small shaker using the pattern paper as an image for your shaker uh, element. I think it's really pretty. I think these hearts in the LDRS dies are amazing. That set I have used so many times I can't even tell you. it. Every one of these dies I have reused. I don't, my LDRS creative supplies stay out. I use them all the time and I know you will too. You will be super happy with this collection. I tell you what. I'm so happy it started snowing again. <laughs> and you know me, I have to make sure that everything is aligned and it doesn't have any booger edges. It has to be all together sweet for anybody receiving it. So there you have it. This is my LDRS Creative uh, showcase for the new release card. It's a four-sided three shaker card. I hope you liked it. I hope you were inspired. I certainly had a blast. Get out your hybrid inks, LDRS Creative Hybrid Inks. The little minis, you're going to love them. Yes, they're amazing. And color with them, paint with them. You will like them. You will use your, your image dyes much more coloring with the hybrid inks. I will tell you that. They're that amazing. And thank you very much for joining me on my LDRS design team project for the new winter release. Please check it out. I will make sure all of it's on the blog. I have to find it all and put it all on there, but I will do that for you. Look at the little berries there. And I hope you enjoy the pictures. You certainly bless me by watching my tutorials. And I love hearing from you. And I will answer your comments. If you comment, you will get an answer back because I enjoy meeting my subscribers. Thank you for subscribing to everybody. And thank you for viewing the LDRS Creative new release. Please check it out and enjoy the pictures. That's always uh, fun at the end. So stick with me and I will see you on the next LDRS Creative tutorial. Please enjoy. They're super cute. All our love. <laughs> yes. Take care, everybody. Have a blessed week.